So let's try to simulate what our 2-bit adder we have designed. So I have kept all our source codes in the same folder here and I have my model sim here. As usual first we will change directory to the folder where we have kept our source code. And since there is no work library, first we need to create a work lib. So we lib work. Now we have empty work library. Let's compile our source code. So we can just type vlog half adder dot v. Okay, so we have half adder here. No errors. Vlog, let's try two bit adder. okay so we made an error so if you double click here he will directly open it here uh, we missed a comma here okay so change it save it up arrow yeah so that's also come back now remember our two bit adder it instantiated a full adder as well as a half adder inside okay so let me try to simulate two bit adder without compiling our full adder i have compiled half adder I haven't compiled full adder, so let's try to simulate. Okay, we sim two bit adder, right? Work dot two bit adder. And you will see there is a loading error. Okay, so what he's saying, instantiation of full adder failed, design unit was not found. Okay, so this is what happens when you try to simulate a design which instantiates another module and if that module is not compiled and kept it in the work library, you will get a load error, a runtime error. Okay, so we need to compile all the files. So vlog full adder dot v that also has error, same error, we missed a comma. Okay, full adder. So full adder also, okay. Now we can simulate. So v sim two bit so wave window comes here and under the sim tab you can see model sim it automatically shows the hierarchy so two bit adder it's the top module under that you can see uh, a full adder and a half adder they are instantiated so he is going to show the instant names uh, here and the module names here. Under design unit, you will see module name. Under instance, you will see the instance name, whatever instance name we used, HA and FA, that's what we used. Now under HA and FA, if you expand, you can see this has an XOR gate, AND gate, this has XOR, AND, 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 and an OR gate. So this is a useful feature which helps us to see the entire hierarchy. Now let's add the waveform, so right click and add wave so when you right click 2-bit adder and add wave it will show you all the inputs and output of 2-bit adder as well as the internal wire we have a single internal wire c out that's what is coming here now suppose if you want to see uh, the internal wires of half adder or input output coming from half adder you can right click half adder and add that signal also now if you put all the signals together it may be cluttered so what you can do is you can right click and choose add a new divider and there you can write like half adder and after that we can add it okay so that we can clearly see uh, these signals are under half adder same way you can add a full adder also add a new divider full adder and full adder okay so you can see all the signals from full adder and by default all the signals it shows the entire hierarchy you can see this is a signal a which is inside full adder which is inside two bit adder so he is showing the entire hierarchy now if you would like to see only the names of the signal you don't want to see the entire hierarchy here there is a button uh, toggle leaf names so if you click it it will hide the entire hierarchy entire path and just show you the signal name okay again that's a useful feature fine so since we have these labels here 
we can just keep the signal names uh, as usual let's try whether it is working so i am going to give some value to a and b and see whether the right sum is coming or not so let's force and let's give a as binary let's say three and b as uh, binary okay two fine and run for 100 picosecond and you can see 101 uh, which is 5 so 3 plus 2 is 5 that means it is working right so if you want to give another value force and give maybe 1 and b let it be 2 itself and you can see it's 1 1 which is 3 so it seems like it's working again if you want to be 100 percent sure you will have to give all the possible combinations for a and all possible combinations for b so a will have values 0 to 3 b will have values 0 to 3 so all possible combinations will be 4 times 4 16 uh, combinations you will have to give anyway this is a simple circuit it is working now uh, viewing these values in binary again sometimes uh, we are not very comfortable if you want to see it in decimal or hexadecimal other number system you can right click and choose the radix here okay unsigned decimal so it will directly show three and one you can choose multiple signals by pressing shift and the mouse and you can change the radix unsigned so now you can see three plus two is five one plus two is three so wherever this signal crossing is happening that is what is showing like uh, the value in the signal has changed this is how he will show uh, whenever your signal is composed of more than one bit if it is a single bit you will directly see the signal transition like this if it is a bus that is more than one wire uh, signal transition will be shown like this okay so all these are good features of uh, model sim uh, you can also see all the si internal signals are also changing at this point uh, since there are no bugs in this one okay maybe they are not very interesting otherwise what we usually do is we give the input to the topmost module we check the output and we may find like the output is not the expected one then you will have to dig deeper and check the signals coming from each sub module and see whether they are getting proper input and whether they are giving proper output and that's how we will debug our design for for simple designs okay where you can manually observe the waveforms now another useful feature of model sim so suppose uh, you did this simulation today and tomorrow you again want to do the simulation so remember this wave window uh, it is not the default wave window okay when you added it by default only this a b s and c out came we added this uh, sub modules and we add these labels so suppose you want to save this wave window for future so that when you start a new simulation this wave window automatically comes that is possible okay so once you have done with all formatting the wave window you can go to file and you can choose save format and it will ask the name of the file the name of the file will have an extension dot do okay so again better to keep it in the same folder where you have your design file and you can give whatever name you want but usually we call it like the wave.do file wave .do. okay you can choose okay if you go to that folder you will see there's a wave.do which has the information about all this wave window if you open it you will see like that's again a text file only and inside that he has the commands for adding the waves to the wave window same commands which were getting executed when we were adding them in the gui okay same commands but he puts them together in a single file for you that's a good feature these are temporary files because we did some editing and this is the internal file of model sim which has the waveform information okay so simulation is done uh, we can stop simulation so you can type quit sim so the simulation is over now again let's see another feature of model sim suppose uh, you want to give your code to someone else who already has model sim and you don't want him to type all the commands for compilation simulation everything okay 
So what you can do is all these commands for compilation simulation, you can write them together in a so-called script file and provide that file also to that guy so that he can just run that file to uh, get all these steps done. Even for you, it is useful. Okay? So instead of you doing compilation simulation by typing the commands or using the GUI each time, you can write all those commands in a single file like the wave file, what model sim did, and we can just run that file. So let me quickly show you how to do it. So again, you can take a, any text editor and you can write all the commands there. For example, the commands that we used uh, to create a work library. So if you type vlib work and if work already exists, he will not create a new library. He will just give you a warning. Okay. So we can use make of it. So we can just type vlib work. No problem. If work exists, he will use the same work. Otherwise, he will create a new work library. Then vlog full adder dot v, vlog half adder dot v, vlog two bit adder dot v. We can use wildcard also star dot v, which will compile all the vlog files in the folder, but maybe not a very good idea. After that, uh, we have compiled everything. So assuming compilation is successful, we can simulate vsim work dot two bit adder so the simulator will load after that what we need after that we need to load the wave into okay so assuming you have already created and saved that wave window with the name wave.do that's the name we used here wave.do we can simply type do wave.do okay so do command it will load the wave window after that what you need you need to give some value to a and b and check whether it is working right so these are the commands for that force freeze a the value of a okay this is in binary by default one one so let's give three and to b we can give two after that we need to run it for some time okay say run 100 picosecond that's it so these are all the commands so save it in the same folder and give whatever name you want but with an extension again do we usually give the name run and we'll just call it run dot do okay save it so what happens is next time when you open model sim and just type to run dot do and you can see he compiles he loads the simulator wave came and he gave the signals value and the output game okay quite simple right so this is a useful feature uh, i would add one more thing suppose when you are giving values to a b and all input uh, sometimes it is difficult to give it in binary if they are only one bit or two bit okay it's easy but suppose it's a 32 bit value and you want to give a value to a and b in binary it becomes difficult so what you can do is when you right click and give the value when you force if you are giving values in decimal you can just type tick okay single apostrophe decimal to indicate this is a decimal value and you can give the value for example two tick d2 okay so a got the value 2 2 plus 2 4 if you type it without that tick so for example if you simply type 3 here and if you try to give the value it will give an error because by default he is expecting value in binary and he's saying like 3 is not a valid binary so if you are giving it in decimal tick d if you are giving it in hexadecimal tick h okay you can give in hex also for example three that's also possible or you can give in octal also no problem but we usually give values either in binary decimal 
or hexadecimal. Hexadecimal may be more popular. That we will see as we go forward. Okay, so that's it. So we simulated, we checked and we found out this is working fine. So in the next video, we will discuss the next topic. Thank you.